Hello, today we are going to set up another one of the Doge computers. Uh, you have seen them in my other videos. I use them uh, everywhere as my support tools. Uh, first because they are nice and portable. And then on the back, they take a ton of cards. Uh, and in particular, they take both PCI and ISA card which means you can get really old uh, cards that won't fit into any other computers. But they are modern enough that they'll boot even modern Linux. So they go from DOS to Windows 98 to NT to XP to Linux. So I finally repaired my Data.io PROM programmer and now it's time to do what I wanted to do in the first place which is to burn a vintage PROM and it's my, in my good old uh, Dolch computer which runs DOS. There you go, it passed. So I burned my two PROMs. Okay, now that we have it connecting to something, I uh, can answer a question. Is can you use it for connecting to Linux? And it turns out my Dolch here, which I've seen mostly booting in Windows 98, uh, can also do Windows XP. And I have a little Linux here. And while it's booting, uh, and that's why I like the Dolch. It has COM ports, two of them. So here we go, simplified version of Linux, and as soon as I do that, it should spawn something over here. There we go. So here you go. Uh, you have a a nice uh, Unix console, uh, vintage, real vintage way to go into Unix. We are going to have fun with nine track tapes and you have almost my entire collection. Um, we'll start actually with the more modern HP. Uh, it's actually one of the first SCSI tapes, so it's SCSI 1 at the back. A SCSI 2 adapter on my Dolch. So it should detect it. Coming up. Yes. Yes, got it. It's at ID5. Hopefully I got it right. And it says reading. Well, that's a good sign. So let's jump back to Windows for a second. Yay! Windows. We're on the network. I'm going to be able to suck the files and look at them on my uh, other computer. What I really want to do is see if I can read it on this. And so this is uh, vintage 1974, I think. And this one is an HP ID. You so have to find an old ISA HP ID card, which took my ISA port over here. And a one, and a two, and a three. And it's not working. It's not working because it's not online. So let's put it online. There you go. And this interesting uh, overland, I think that's a parallel port one. I actually found the software that came with it. It's called Depo 4. And ta da da, look at that. It has a user interface to it. You can view a tip. Da 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 da, -da yes. And here, you just read it. I put them in this magnificent box of old five and a quarter uh, disk drives. Let's do the, the low density drive. It's more fun to see it work. Uh, so it just goes in here. I have two choices in the older five and a quarter, which is the 1.2 meg, that would be HD drive, or the 360K, which will be the 
double density drive. The seek 20. I'm going to do seek 40. 20 to the end. Seek 0. Right? And so I can access basically any, any track. Those were usually used as uh, network traffic controllers and this one is a tester for optical fiber channel actually. So this thing is supposed to be able to inject packets uh, in the middle of uh, fiber channel frames. That's why there are two of these interfaces. You can see the fiber optics cable. And probably was never used, new from the bag. If we can plug it in, there we go. Optical fiber for you. One gig. You can go uh, like probably <coughs> 500 meters or a kilometer with that. We'll want to fit a lot of things in that uh, Dolch. Uh, first, this is the uh, that's the valuable clickety keyboard with the uh, cherry keys, but I don't like it because it doesn't have the integrated mouse. Uh, so I'll replace it with one that actually says Dolch on it and has the little mouse in it so it's nicer for lab use. Let's see which state this one is in. And actually this is one of the best I have had so far. Uh, the screen is good. The two other ones, the screen where was cracked. Let's replace it. It has, let's skip over the test, it has 500 meg of memory, which is more than my two others. And uh, it has a 12.7 gig drive. The floppy failed. Uh, check some error, that's normal. And then it should boot into NT. Remember that blue screen and then I want to preserve the NT installation as is because it has all the drivers for uh, the fiber channel cards and, and the proprietary software. Now of course control alt delete to get into this and I don't have the password. So let's also put the properly colored Dolch keyboard in. or not well wouldn't you know it okay the administrator passwords was nothing <laughs> so this one came with or the original stuff so gigabit traffic system for fiber, fiber channel with some uh, manual for the software it has optical fiber the uh, original mouse with a, uh, a serial connector Try to use that. And even a nice dolch pack that goes with it. Yoohoo! Okay, just restarted it with the mouse attached and it found it. Uh, so let's see what it has. Alright. So the disk is set up as uh, NT on 1 gig. The swap space and the apps were on another gig, but there were very few of them. I uh, next the uh, swap and put it back on the main disk. And now I need to reformat the whole darn thing, so I just skip this, extend it to two gig, and then put my other systems in there. Uh, so I need a floppy uh, drive to do that. That works. So that's the first thing we need to fix. Okay, it must have been quite expensive at the time. Fiber optic stuff, and if you look in there, you'll see four PCI slots and one old ISA slot. So you can either use this slot either in ISA or PCI, which is one of the big reasons I like those machines. Hooray! No, that's unexpected. I have never seen that. 
The floppy is not attached to a floppy cable, it's on the IDE chain. So it's an IDE floppy and I looked it up, there's actually such a thing, there's supposed to be better drive. So I wonder if the floppy is working, but it's just, it reverted to the default BIOS, which wants a floppy on the normal uh, floppy connector. And here's our processor in a nice little funnel. Oh, let's go to the BIOS and now we put that to none and I have reconnected the original pile of disks and sure enough I hadn't noticed it but what I have is on the IDE is a UHD floppy so it's a super goody extra super goody floppy CR2032 goes right here. Okay, floppy A. Yeah, so my UHD floppy actually works and it's indeed a very fast floppy. I finally got to it, but I think I have found why I, my mouse was not working on the one that's integrated on the keyboard. Because that contact is all screwed up. And I bet you that's where the mouse comes out. Alright, so we'll repair that and put it all back together. I think that should be fine. So we'll add the disk for Linux. Okay, so it fits. So it looks like I regressed for a bit here. It wouldn't uh, recognize one of the ID ports anymore. Uh, it garbled, it would recognize the disk but garbled the name which tells me one bit is not making it through. And uh, so I took the motherboard out and uh, looked at all the data bits on the ID port that was failing and they are all coming to their termination resistors over here so they seem to be connected fine. So that's not it but uh, while I was doing that it gave me an overview of the motherboard uh, and it's a 20 year old computer and it's not that bad uh, so it's pretty fine pitch you can see the load resistors over there they're super small I had a lot of time to probe them it has components all over the place so it's interesting to see how you no know, ancient that computer is and the, how, how ancient the processor has gotten but not the PCB at all. It's all Surface Mountain Company. It isn't as antiquated as you'd think it would be. It's pretty modern. And of course the processor is totally obsolete by orders of magnitude, right? A few hundred megahertz uh, Pentium 2. Interesting. So anyhow, I have one Zap ID port. So if it's not the port, it must be the cable. But Oh my, I'm having setbacks after setbacks here. I'm going backwards. Um, inspected the motherboard, everything's great. Put it back together, recognizes the disks again. And then a few restarts after that, it goes. Deep of death. Uh, so that's usually, uh, as I read uh, for the award BIOS, it's a processor not working, which I have a, a hard time believing that's it, so I'm going to check power supplies first. But man, everything is breaking one after another in that uh, box.